Hey everybody, it's Rob with Cherry City Guns and Ammo, and today we're taking a look at a piece of history. What I'm holding right here is a Krag Jorgensen model of 1896, built in 1899, um, better known as the 3040 Krag. <laughs> Stick around. Alright, once again, 3040 Krieg. This is the shortest serving military adopted rifle in the US military history. Uh, it was adopted in 1892 and lasted until 1903. So only 11 years was this uh, used by the US military. It was originally developed by a Danish company called, oftentimes referred to as Krieg Jorgensen, but it was actually pronounced Krag Jorgensen. Uh, Danish company submitted it, the U.S. Army adopted it, and these were all actually produced in, uh, at Springfield Arms in Massachusetts. Uh, the 3040 Krieg, it's, it was built as a smokeless powder rifle uh, cartridge. It's actually the very first smokeless powder cartridge ever adopted by the U.S. military. The gun that this replaced was the old Trapdoor Springfield uh, in 4570, so a single shot 4570 loaded up with black powder. And despite the fact it was a smokeless cartridge from the very get-go, they still maintained that old black powder naming convention, um, just like the 3030 Winchester. That, the 3030 Winchester was actually the very first factory smokeless powder cartridge, but again, kept the old black powder naming uh, convention, which is caliber with how many grains of black powder. So 3030 Winchester is 30 caliber bullet over 30 grains of powder. 3040 Krieg, 30 caliber bullet over 40 grains of powder. So this has slightly more powder than a 3030 Winchester, but they were built to shoot a far heavier bullet. The military loading on this was a 220 grain bullet. So a little bit more powder than the 3030, but it actually had even kind of worse ballistics because it had such a heavier bullet coming out. Um, really the ballistics weren't great on this at all, which is part of the reason that it lasted for such a short period of time. Um, but also because it's the sights are set up for that very heavy, slow moving bullet. And uh, we don't have any factory ammo. These are all hand loads that I put together for this rifle using 168 grain bullets. So they're traveling far faster. And so there is a fair amount of Kentucky windage going on here. Um, Cause I'm having to aim very low to maybe make some hits. So let's try to get some hits. Um, we're gonna start off here at 60 yards. We've got our 60 yard silhouette pretty much right there at the tip of the barrel, boom, right there. And uh, I'm gonna aim right at the base of it. Let's see if I can hit it. We hit it and it got there like right now. Let's uh, shoot the 10 inch 60 yard plate. Well, one thing's for damn sure, it hits with a tremendous amount of authority. Let's, uh, let's see if I can make a hit at 100 yards. We've got our 100 yard silhouette right there. Uh, the guy who actually owns this rifle, it's not my rifle, he was shooting it right before me. Um, it's been in his family his entire life and then some, and he's never shot it before. So we got to get out there and shoot it. But I'm going to have to hold all the way underneath that 100 yard silhouette to see if I can hit it. Yep. So. We have a 100 yard head out there and I was aiming even with the top of the 100 yard head but under the 100 yard silhouette to hit the silhouette. So I was aiming, it's probably 8 to 10 inches below the bottom of the silhouette to hit it. And that time I pulled it. <laughs> Alright, we're empty. So let's look at some of the very, very unique things about this old 3040 Krag. You know, loosen up my thing here so we can point down a little bit here. And I gotta tighten it up, sorry. I don't have a camera, man. All right, so these are the things that make the Craig a very, very unique rifle, but also kind of the reason why it didn't last. So, number one, the, the, the 
sights are really fine. It's a very narrow notch with a very fine front blade. So they're kind of hard to, to pick up. What's really neat is how you load this. So most of your old battle rifles got loaded with like a stripper clip, but that didn't really start up until closer to World War I. Again, this replaced the old trapdoor Springfield, which was a single shot 4570. So anything that could hold multiple rounds was a huge jump up. But this one, you literally have this little gate here that you open up, and then you just have a bunch of loose rounds that you literally just drop in here, like so. And you can put five in there. Once you drop them all in, you can snap this door shut and it's loaded. Now, there is a switch here on the side. You've got an up position and a down position. In the down position, it's in single shot mode. So I open this bolt and no round comes forward for me to chamber. And I guess the idea was you keep your magazine loaded and then you just single fight feed them one at a time until you get into a situation where you need to shoot like rapidly, then you flip that up and then you're able to feed rounds from the magazine. The problem with that is it doesn't seem to make much sense. It's a bolt action. You can shoot them as slow as you want, whenever you want. You don't need to put it in single action mode or single shot mode. Um, so that's kind of odd. And one of the reasons that this didn't last longer as a military cartridge was because of the Spanish-American War down in Cuba. When they went down and were fighting in Cuba, they found, one, the ballistics of this thing weren't great for being able to shoot long distance because of the heavy, slow bullet. Uh, on top of that, when you go to reload, it seems like a very easy way to reload, and it is, but if you're doing it under any type of stress, you've got loose rounds, and there's just too good a chance of fumbling them and dropping them. The Spanish they were fighting in Cuba had the Spanish Mauser, and it was chambered in 7x57, which is a pretty flat shooting cartridge that has far superior range than the 3040 Craig. On top of that, that rifle was set up to use stripper clips. And so you take a stripper clip with five rounds on it, it's a lot easier to not fumble, stick in the top, push them all in, pop out the stripper clip, and you've got your full five rounds loaded. This has a slight advantage is that you could be partially empty and if you get a break, you can pop it open, drop a few more rounds and top it off, close it back up. Whereas if you're loading from a stripper clip, it has to be empty before you reload it. Um, but if you're in the heat of battle, you're gonna be running it till it's empty and then running the stripper clip. So that, that Mauser was able to be reloaded far quicker and loaded with a caliber that was a far superior caliber. So after the Spanish-American War, they went back into the doing some research on the on the cartridge and a different loading. They lowered it to 180 grain bullet and then really pumped up, tried to pump up the velocity, but of course that also upped the pressure. So that 220 grain round was 220 feet per second, or I mean 2200 feet per second. With the 180 grain loading, they were getting it to about 2300 feet per second, but this is not the strongest action in the world and they started cracking recoil lugs. So they found that that faster loading was just not working. Now we're shooting, shooting a lighter bullet in this too, but this is a safe hand load. It's a way lower pressure hand load um, that does work, but it's, it's traveling really slow. So it was that combination of stuff. And then in, in 1903, Springfield came out with the Springfield 1903 model, which is chambered in 30-06. So it's still a 30 caliber bullet, but the factory loading was 150 grain bullet and it has a far uh, larger case for greater powder capacity. So it's pushing that 150 grain bullet far faster, far superior ballistics, and it was built much stronger so it could handle that higher pressure. So that's why the old Krag Jorgensen just didn't last very long, but it's still a re really neat rifle with a really neat history. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders, they actually turned all theirs into um, carbines by shortening them down. And because of the very small uh, amount of powder that's put in these cartridges with you know only 40 grains, the, the extra long barrel, it gives you one advantage and that's a longer sight radius, which makes it a little easier to aim uh, open sights. But it didn't do anything ballistically because your powder's burnt up so quickly because it was such a small charge of powder. So there was really not a huge advantage in having a longer barrel. So they went to the carbines and 
Teddy and the Rough Riders did pretty good with it. But let's shoot this old uh, battle rifle again. We're gonna go back out here to the 60 yard again. Um, sights are hard to acquire because they really are fine. But that being said, it should mean that it should be fairly fine accuracy as long as I can take the drop into consideration. So at 60 yards, I've got a four inch plate. And I'm gonna guesstimate where I need to hold and see if I can hit that four inch plate. Nope. Hit just a little high. I'm gonna hold just a little lower. There we go. So with the Kentucky windage, you can hit a four inch plate at 60 yards, which means I should be able to hit the head at 100. And I try to hit everything, hit the head with everything at 100. It's way out there. It's down and to the left of that silhouette. I think I'm basically going to have to hold at the ground underneath it. First shot, got the head. So this is capable of some good accuracy, just with a, a load that these sights are not designed for. You just got to do a little, little Kentucky windage. Missed it on that one. If I can hit the head once, I can hit it again. That may have been a little too low. Time to top her off. And I could see if under stress, you've got a handful of loose cartridges just bumbling and dropping them all over the place. I would definitely prefer to load with a stripper clip. But still, this is kind of neat. Got it on the first shot. Come on now. Kidding me. Come on, come on. I hit the T post that it's on. I heard it. I heard the little tick. And I am empty, and so is my pocket. I'm going to get more rounds, because this is a fun rifle to shoot. I'll be right back. All right, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm kind of ticked. I only hit the head once. I'm going to hit the head. It's time for that head to go down. I don't think I was holding quite low enough that time. There we go, hit the head again. All right, on to an easier target. Back to the silhouette. I got the silhouette figured out. That was definitely me. This thing is just cooler than heck, man. Guess it's time to reload. I'm, I have three more shots I'm going to take with this before the, the thing's over. The rest of the rounds I'm leaving for the gun's owner to have some fun with. But I'm having fun with this. This is cool. Now I need an old Spanish Mauser to uh, shoot against this thing and kind of remake the uh, Spanish-American War. All right, three more on the old silhouette. No, I'm going to do another one on the head. I'm going to hit the head again. Two more shots to hit that head. Come on now. I think I hit the T-post. I heard the sound, but it wasn't the right sound for the head. There we go on the last shot. Done. Well, this is a cool gun. This was a ton of fun for me. I really like these old historic guns. Even if... Even if the unique ideas that they used when they built this gun didn't really work out in the long run, it's still just, it's still neat. And it's a piece of history. Um, and I dig it. I don't have to have nothing but AR-15s. Again, I, I have a lot of AR-15s and I like them. I like a lot of the new technology stuff. But I like, I like all guns. I love these old historic guns. I think they're just neater than heck. And uh, if this was my gun, it'd be getting shot a lot. Because I dig it. I think it's neat. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed making it. This was a ton of fun. Neat old rifle. If you ever had a chance to miss with one of these Craigs, let me know what you think of it. I think it's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Anyway, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.
Hey everybody, it's Robert Chase here. Hey everybody, it's Robert Chase. Why can't I talk?